Here we have highlighted in blue some of the long bones an EMT may have to immobilize. Now that you have seen the skill completed properly, let's walk through the steps. Here we have highlighted in blue some of the long bones an EMT may have to immobilize. The EMT takes appropriate body substance isolation precautions. This includes gloves and eye protection. The EMT will then direct his or her partner to maintain manual stabilization of the injured extremity. While the EMT assesses for circulation, motor function, and sensation distal to the injury. Circulation can be assessed by palpating a distal pulse or capillary refill time. Motor function can be assessed by having the patient move his or her fingers or toes on the injured extremity. Sensation can be assessed by touching a finger or toe distal to the injury and asking the patient which digit the EMT is touching. The EMT will then select the proper splinting materials to immobilize the injured long bone. We will be using a vacuum splint to secure the tibia and fibula. The EMT will then measure the splint on the uninjured extremity. The EMT then properly applies the splint, securing the joint above and below the injured long bone, while eliminating excessive movement. The EMT should ensure immobilization of the long bone above the injury site and immobilize the long bone below the injury site. For the tibia and fibula, the ankle and knee are immobilized. Before splinting is complete, the EMT will ensure circulation, motor function, and sensation distal to the injury are present.